Problems on linked lists are notoriously famous for one thing, and that is pointers. These problems want you to play around and swap these pointers to arrive at your answer, rather than changing the actual value of the node. One such problem is available on lead code, swap nodes in pair, which explores around this concept. So let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, I want to tell you some of the gotchas and some of the things you need to take care about while solving this problem. Going forward, we will try to come up with an efficient solution to the problem and then as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and see how all of this actually works in action. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given a linked list and you have to swap every two adjacent nodes, correct? And at the end, you have to return me the head of this new list in which all of these nodes have been swapped, correct? Along with this, in this problem, you are also said that all of these operations must be done without changing the values in the actual nodes. So we will get to this part in a while. But for now, just make sure that you understand what the problem is saying. So in a first test case, you can see that I have a list that has four nodes, correct? And you have to swap every two adjacent nodes. So this means that you're going to swap one and two, and then you're going to swap three and four, right? So once this swapping has happened, your resultant list will look something like this, correct? You can see that these two nodes are swapped and these two nodes are swapped. That's it. This is the answer. And similarly, let us say you had a list that had odd number of elements. For example, in a test case number two, you can see that I only have three nodes. So in such scenarios, what you have to do is you have to keep on swapping until you can find adjacent nodes. Once you cannot find any adjacent nodes, you have to stop over there. So in a test case number two, you find the adjacent node to 11. So you swap both of them. But you see that I cannot find any adjacent node to 13, right? It is actually a null over here. So you don't have to do anything with 13. And your answer to this test case will be this resultant list. You can see that nodes 12 and 11 have swapped and 13 remains the same, correct? So you can understand that for all of the test cases, how the output will look like. So if your list has only one node, then you cannot perform any swapping. And that in fact will be the resultant answer. Right? So now, if you feel that you have understood the problem statement correctly, let us go back and try to understand the part that we left out. That all of this must be done without changing the values. So what does that actually mean? So this is one of the things that you need to be careful about while solving this problem. For example, you are given this linked list, right? And then you have to perform these swaps without changing the actual values in the nodes. That means these actual nodes should get swapped, not the values inside them. So I know that it is very, very tempting to come up with a solution where you can say that, okay, you start off with the first pointer. This is where you point, right? And then you can point at both of these values, just swap them. So your resultant list will look something like this, correct? And now what you can do is you can move your pointer to the next location. And then once again, you can do the swapping, right? You will create more nodes over here. And then you will put the swapped values in them or rather you don't even want to create new nodes. You can just use a temporary variable and then swap both the values, right? But that is what the problem suggests you not to do that. This must be done without changing the values in the actual nodes. That means you have to actually change the positioning of these nodes. And that is the beauty of a linked list, right? Because these nodes are at any random location in the memory. The next pointer just tells you, okay, this is where you go to find the next node. So these are some things that you should be careful about. There are more tempting solutions that, okay, you can say that I will create a whole new linked list as per my choice and then start assigning all the swapped values and then return the new head, right? So once again, this solution will give you the list in the same order as expected, but it will not be a correct solution because you're not swapping the actual nodes. So these are some of the things that you should consider while solving this problem. So now, how do you go about solving this problem without taking any extra space and without doing any actual swapping of values? What do you do about it? Yes, you're going to play with all of these pointers. So when it comes to problems like these, I have often seen that 
there is a general confusion about where to actually start because if you start from the first node then there is a very high chance that as you start performing some operations you can lose the first node right and you know that in a linked list if you lose a first node then your entire list is lost so i have seen that that often causes confusions like okay where to start and how do i actually start to loop around so to solve this problem there is a general pattern that you must try to adopt what we do over here is we create a dummy node just assign any value to this dummy node and assign the next of this dummy node to the head of the actual list right now the advantage of this dummy node is that you get some starting point and after the starting point you have your entire list to iterate upon so what you can do is you can iterate upon your entire list however you like and at the very end just return a dummy dot next so dummy dot next will be your actual list correct so this is how a dummy node helps you to visualize and understand these linked lists perfectly so right now try to understand this problem once again you have to swap every two adjacent nodes correct so what this dummy node is doing is it is giving me some sort of a starting point right i call it point and after this point i have to perform all of my swappings right so what is the first node that i have to swap let us call it swap 1 that means this is the first node that i have to swap and what do i have to swap it with i have to swap it with the second node so let us call this node swap 2 so now what is happening is you are looking from this direction and you are seeing that okay you have to swap these two nodes right and to perform this swapping we are going to do exactly what is desired we will try to achieve this result right and to understand things better you need to look ahead right and let us just try to think these are the swap nodes and what i am doing with them so what i'm going to do is i'm going to label these nodes over here as well this is just to help you understand where we are heading to and as a programmer it is always a good idea to keep your eye sight over the point where you have to reach okay now start one by one so first of all i will see this node swap 1 okay so where is the next of swap 1 pointing to the next of swap 1 is pointing at node 3 right and if you look in this list how can you reach node 3 you can reach node 3 by the next of swap 2 right so what i have to do is i have to modify this pointer right and i can do this by doing swap 1 dot next that is equal to swap 2 dot next right so once i execute this what will happen swap 1 dot next is lost and swap 1 dot next will now point to swap 2 dot next correct now go ahead and look at the next node this is swap 2 right what happens in swap 2 the next of swap 2 it is pointing at swap 1 so that is exactly what we are going to do we are going to assign swap 2 dot next equals to swap 1 so what will this do it will break off this pointer from swap 2 and now we are going to create a new pointer swap 2 dot next equals to swap 1 right so you can see how we are achieving this same condition over here right but still things are not done over here why is that so because if you look at this dummy pointer the next of this dummy pointer is still pointing at swap 1 right but your list does not start from this point now correct you need to update this pointer as well so the next step that we do is that is point dot next equals to swap 2 because that is where my new list will begin correct so what will this do what i am essentially saying is point dot next that is equal to swap 2 right so you see how we are performing each operation one by one and try to head in the direction where our final result is correct so up till now what did you do you have completed one iteration right you were standing at this position and you had to swap these two nodes correct once this iteration will be over what will you do you will now have to stand at this position right and then you have to swap the two nodes that are ahead of this current node right that means now you have to swap these two nodes whatever the node over here is 
right? So you need to update your point now. So what I'm going to do is I will do point equals to swap one. So this will just translate this point over swap one. So now kind of I'm standing at this position and I'm looking to swap both of these two nodes. So this iteration will keep on happening and you are going to swap both of these nodes one by one, right? After all of the swapping is done, what do you do? You go back to your starting point and you will save your dummy node in some location, right? And just return the next and then you will get your entire list as your answer. So you can see that we did not change the actual values in the nodes, but we were just playing around with the pointers and all of this is happening in constant space as well, right? Now, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have this linked list which has a head and this head is passed in as an input parameter to the function swap pairs, right? Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. So moving on with the dry run, what is the first thing that we do? As I told you, first of all, create a dummy node and assign the next of the dummy node to the head. This way, we will be able to just skip this and then return our resultant list, right? So I create a dummy node over here and then assign its next to the head. Okay, so now you have a starting point. After this, we will define a starting point or the point of view from where we start looking things, right? So I define my point to be the dummy. So my point actually points over here, right? Now you will start your while loop where the actual action happens. If you remember, you can only perform the swap if there is a node present and you have a node to the next of it. So that is the condition I will put in my while loop that if I have a point dot next and if I have a point dot next dot next, only if I have two nodes available, then only I can perform my swap, correct? Otherwise, just exit the loop and you have completed all of your swapping, right? So once you are inside this loop, you have identified which of the nodes do you want to swap, right? So swap one will be point dot next and swap two will be point dot next dot next. So now you have identified both of your nodes, correct? After this, what you do is you actually swap your nodes. And once you perform swapping, this node will go over here and this node will come over here, right? So your list will end up looking something like, right? And that is because these steps are literally the same steps that we discussed a while ago and found out how these steps actually work, right? So now you can see that I have changed my point of view and now I will be looking at the list in a forward direction. This loop will now run again and I'm going to identify these two nodes to swap again, right? Once this loop exits, what will happen? You return dummy dot next and you can see that the next of dummy is pointing at the new list in which all of the nodes are swapped. Wonderful, right? The time complexity of this solution is order of n because you iterate through the list only once and the space complexity of this solution is order of one because you do not take any extra space to arrive at your solution. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that as you solve more and more problems on linked lists, you will start to identify different kinds of patterns. For example, in such problems, what you can do is you can start things with a dummy node because sometimes you will face a problem. Okay, where do I even start my calculations? Because if you start at head, then there is a possibility that amongst your calculations, you are going to lose your head. So that is why this dummy node comes in handy. You attach a dummy node at the beginning of the linked list and then you have a starting point. You are now free to iterate over this entire list without worrying about your dummy node. At the last, you can get rid of it and return the actual list. So that is one pattern which can help you to solve problems on linked lists. What are the patterns have you seen that help you to solve problems on linked lists? One such pattern is a fast and a slow pointer, correct? So while going through this video, did you face any problems throughout? Or have you seen some other problems that are working on the same pattern? Or how many types of different patterns have you identified? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of these cool things with you. Also let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. 
This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Until then, see ya.